Oh hi there, it's me Thermos Jar, and I got another topic for today to talk about. Uh, this is personal actually, and uh, as you saw the title, I just want to speak out what I felt throughout the journey and the end. Well, I'll start from the basic, why I started playing Escape from Tarkov. Well, back in the day when it just appeared on the horizon, my eyes fell upon the game with intention that holy shit, there is something else to play that is probably good. It checks all the marks that I love, which is guns, exploration, combat, PvP. Because I was already back then tired of uh, the rotation of games that I have. The CSGO, Arma, and plethora, plethora of other stuff. Yeah, it came out. Came out in Alpha. I, I remember that. I, I love the game. Like it was something I like. You can just take your gun, put shit on it, make it into a meme thing and or a serious thing or meta gun. It was, it was fun actually. I remember those days fu with with joy actually. Like I sat down there with buddies and we played many matches in Tarkov. It was only a couple of maps, like what factory customs. But just then, it was fun enough to enjoy. And the people I met there, holy shit, how many people I met and talked to. I mean, from toxic clans that <laughs> abused their player base by the leaders of simply harvesting the money that the little underlings kill in the factory, to, to communities that festered into these insane globe mobs that just piled into the server simply to get everything they want so that there is least players to be there to compete with them. Man, I've seen a lot of stuff, like, I've seen a lot. I invested in an Escape of Tarkov as well, money-wise and time-wise. I'll start from the money part and then I'll go to the time. I bought the Standard Edition when it came out and I really enjoyed the Standard Edition for a while until I came to realize, oh shit, this game is gonna take really long time, it's still in early access, so if I help the developer... By the way, this is the time before I figured out that these guys are Russians. Yeah, I was naive. I was really naive. <laughs> yeah, I invested money and I bought the best edition with the stupid interest that they have, the tax. Fuck you. And I really felt like I'm set back then. I was top. I was the king. I was amongst the other players that have the crown. And yeah, I was enjoying the game. It was like looking into the future that your game is gonna grow with you. Now the time. So the time itself in Tarkov is actually currency. It's not really rubles, actually. It's it's how much time you can spend in Tarkov playing it. I learned that the hard way because when I would start doing jobs and life starts kicking in into fast gear, there's no time to play that game. So I would end up falling behind and, and really couldn't do shit. So I employed these dirty tactics of sharing account to play so that somebody else can play for me meanwhile I'm just doing other stuff and and when that guy gets bored and he levels up my shit I would take over back and continue playing. I even employ these tactics to get to be in the game's loop, you know, after each wipe. But yeah, the time itself how much you can invest in Tarkov is the currency or that is intended to push the game. In, for yourself, like your progression. Time is your progression because the rubles in the game don't really matter for shit. The money in the game means nothing. It's how much time you invested in the traders and the quests and ability to buy good shit that can kill better shit. That was pretty much it. You could literally empty your stash, just do a couple of scav raids, and as long as you have that <clears throat> high level trader with good ammo. Buy a piece of shit gun that uses that ammo, and you can already kill the chads. And that could have got you from zero to hero right away, even if when you emptied your stash. But that's about it. When you don't have time, you instantly sucked in that game. You couldn't do shit. 
and that was apparent for me already in 2018 and 19. Just so now you probably saying it's because of time I'm not playing Tarkov. Actually, yes and no. Like time is not a problem. You can always have a couple of hours a day. But my general reason are these guys. Yep, all of these people. These websites. Well, yeah, cheaters, man. I've seen them all. I got killed head eyes. I got my shit taken away from me. My gun was dropping, disappearing. My loot was disappearing from my backpack. I got teleported. I got frozen. Lag spiked into death. I probably got fed up most of the shit that there was. The fast runners, the flyers, the invisible mofos, the... I fucking seen them all, man. And at start, it didn't feel too bad. Because before labs, cheaters, if you, if you, if you, even if you met one, you could just brush it off. It wasn't that bad. But labs came in, flea market came in. I think that's probably when it became slowly unbearable to play because it just kept up happening and happening you just it's a PTSD by now like you I associate Tarkov with cheaters right away since uh, I played CSGO in the past you you could meet cheater there yeah he ruins your game if he's on your team you could have kicked him if he's not with his buddies but the game ruin doesn't mean the rest of the experience you ruined, you could just queue for another game. And that most likely would have been free of cheaters. Of course, it could be two in a row if nobody's safe from that. But my point, I observe the cheater dramas. There's some YouTubers like Goat who literally cheated on screen just to prove how easy it is to get to that shit. And, and look how many fucking websites I already scrolled through them at the beginning of this. It's just, ne and it's never gonna end. Uh, uh, specifically a game like Tarkov, where match can set you back hours upon hours. Remember, this is a time-based game, so much you invest, you can lose as much as well. Like, if you invested six hours into the game and you died during one of those matches that literally set you back six hours, you can do the math and see what I'm talking about. <sighs> Yeah, that's that's the cheaters, man. The cheaters scene is fucking insane in Tarkov. And the developers are promoting that crap secretly. I'm pretty fucking sure. It's just just connects the dots all the time. Now, game's future and its DLC roadmap. Like, yeah, back then when I thought that buying the best edition was uh, guaranteed uh, full package, you're the OG, you're the best, you pretty much invested in me, so I trust you and I treat you as a really important player. Yeah. What a fool I was. <laughs> I don't know what about DLCs. Like, the first one that came out is Arena, then it was considered not to be DLC, then apparently co-op mode is a DLC, or aka the single player mode is a DLC. I, I don't know. I don't trust the company anymore when it comes to money and what they promise because it's it's a mess now like whatever they say that like whatever he says is just at this point i don't know i don't understand how we as a player still listen to that and play that game now i want to talk about the main culprit of this game like the guy who is in charge that's the nikita Oh god, this guy is... I mean, I looked into his past. I saw what he did with uh, Contract Wars and the other games he did. Which Tarkov is technically uh, offspring of. I don't know. When I found out about his past and what he used to make. I saw Tarkov eventually becoming the same thing. Because he just tried that with Arena. That flopped miserably. And here you go. He's repeating the possibilities of going back to his roots because he literally said once upon a time that if you make a player in inconvenient like give him as much as inconvenience you 
can, he'll start most likely donating into the game so he can play equally with everybody else. I'm pretty fucking sure he was about to do that right now. But the out the, the you know out outlash and the whole explosion in the players going crazy about it kind of stopped him. But I'm pretty fucking sure he's going to repeat it. Like this is another thing that scares me when it comes to Tarkov. He will repeat some kind of predatory monetization in a game which will alienate those who have two brain cells and it will uh, invoke those who don't have brains to continue playing the game and festering this toxic community that's already is there i mean he literally called the guys who are dedicated to tarkov that throw money into it as the chosen people the, the dedicated ones yeah, that's that's what i found out like this is all i'm actually looking through the facts don't believe me please Fortify yourself with knowledge by simply doing a little bit of googling. And to the last part of trifecta, which I personally believe is not healthy for the game. Streamers. You're asking yourself, well, why, what did they do? Well, yeah, that's the thing. They are really big deal. Their voices are louder than yours. If your opinion correlates with their opinion and they speak it out, it's good. But 99% of the time, their opinions are not the same as the player bases that plays the game. Since streamers kind of dominated the public aspect of the game and they are socially more interesting for the developers of the game because they're promoting the game most of the time whatever streamers used to suggest and point out was actually being done by bsg ah, that's even those retarded streamer items that you could find in the game to be honest i never liked them but that's my opinion in other cases i would say that streamers drove the ship, the escape from Tarkov, into direction where the initial idea of the game, which was actually pretty grand, like the seamless world where you could do this, 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 it got turned down because, let's be honest, for streamers that kind of idea would not work. They want quick 40 minutes of stream, kill shit, run shit around, fucking loot, fuck off, sell on flee, talk to their audience, rat in the corner, do their stick, and fuck off. Yeah, that's about it. That's for them, audience like that. But their influence and their size, like I said before, shifted the game into having identity crisis in terms like whatever they say happens. Like, they are not happy with armor. Okay, the game developers instantly go do something with armor. They're not happy with penetrations. Some they, the game developers go do something with penetration. The gun, they don't like recoil. They don't like movement. They don't like that. You see, the streamers started complaining to this point, and everything that they complain about gets changed instead of actually having to do a game to be changed as the players go on forward. Like what I'm trying to say here. Like, developers have a vision. When a, when a de developer has a vision, he knows how his game is gonna go. He knows how to shape the game and how he wants it to be. Nikita did have an idea, which was fun, hardcore and all that shit he said. But, as you can see in the end, the game is becoming less hardcore and more simply streamer suited. Rather than suited for the player on that note i actually want to stop of talking about escape from tarkov there's nothing much to be said about it i can go in circles around the same fucking shit i just quit that game i fucking did i escaped but then again speaking about the competitors of this game like uh, i've been looking for a 
alternative for a while and yeah I mean there is some on the horizon I'll mention some of them right now but uh, there's a fundamental issue that all of these possible competitors come with a twist arena breakout infinite it took Tarkov it challenged Tarkov but there's a creeping problem in the background yeah the Russians are fucking corrupted and crooked as fuck but the Chinese are no better in terms of uh, the game itself right now it's a mobile masterpiece they say but what's gonna come on PC is unknown how the donations gonna work how is the balance gonna work what's the monetizing deal I saw it runs on a potatoes and it's gonna be free to play that's gonna get the fucking player base coming but uh, will there be a pay to win like in Tarkov because that's the general killer of any looter shooter now about Grey Zone. Grey Zone Warfare had a magnificent start with shitload of players hopping into it during the Unheard Edition bullshit. But uh, Chex forgot about the part where the game needs to have more solid ground to walk on. Their engine, Unreal Engine, is pretty fucking stunning. But it requires iron to run it which iron made by gods i mean jokes aside you gotta invest in your pc to run that thing even 3070 is not able to to play solid 60 fps at times so who was the greatest idea to make the game run like that to be so demanding i have no fucking idea i mean yeah we need to push our machines and use every part of them but the bigger the machines and shittier the games run on them i don't know but nevertheless the game is too bare bones there's just it's good but it's not good for its price it's like a five euro game at this point it's like a fucking shitty indie game that you know it's gonna you play for a couple hours and you forget about it in terms of quality <sighs> and there is this forever winter looming in the background by a very passionate developers i saw concept i'll drop in while i'm talking but i don't know it's just too early they don't they had the alpha test behind the curtains people not people that's again influencers youtubers streamers they said it's pretty good it's fun it's different but then again we need to find out when it comes out and only we'll know the true answers when it comes out. And I'm pretty fucking sure it's gonna come out in early access. It's gonna have the six years of early access. Then it's gonna come out and who knows what's gonna happen. That's what sucks about these g days in games. Everything comes out. And then you still need to wait till it gets completed. I'm really fucking tired of games doing that shit. And triple A's are even worse. So this was my story about why I quit Escape from Tarkov. I added more context to it. I talked about a little bit more about that and that and that. And without wasting any more time, have a nice day and see you next one.